Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back. You're watching Towards the Origin and our tonight's topic for discussion is the Holy Prophet and the children. In our first segment, we have discussed about the importance of how to nurture the children and most importantly, we have touched upon how did the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam deal with children in terms of how compassionate he was, how merciful he was and how kindness, what, so what the level of kindness he had towards the children. We'll continue our discussion and at the same time, if you do have any questions related to the topic or even suggestions, feedback with regards to the program, feel free to email us and the email will be displayed at the bottom of your TV screen which is towards the origin at chsuk.tv. Our respected Imam who is the uh, who is an Imam and Khatib of the Regent's Park Mosque is with us tonight and inshallah he'll be more than happy if there is any suggestions or any feedback or any questions related to the topic. Sheikh, before we went into the break, you did touch upon how Luqman um, clearly explained and how he disciplined or how he trained his son. Now, mm. the other aspect I want to ask you is, what was the approach of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when it comes to, he's being very friendly with them, he's been compassionate, he's been kind towards them, but at the same time, he was able to discipline them. Yeah. That's something we see in today's world when we are very close, very uh, kind or very compassionate. No Sometimes yeah. the discipline goes out of the we box. We neglect. Now, yes. how do we mingle that? How, how okay. do we balance it? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, uh, Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a role model as a teacher, as a father, as a husband, as a, as a, as a, as a ruler, as a, hasana. everything, whatever you name, he was a role model. Now let's look at how he was a teacher and while he's teaching how he's disciplining the children. Now uh, this hadith I was mentioning earlier that on the authority of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was teaching, addressing Abdullah ibn Abbas by saying, Ya Ghulam, Oh, beloved son, inni I would like to teach you some important knowledge. And then he said, Preserve Allah, protect Allah, and Allah will protect you. What does that mean? So meaning, preserve the commandments of Allah. Abide by the prohib uh, prohibitions and abide by the commandments of Allah and refrain from the prohibitions of Allah, and Allah will protect you. And then he says, Again, protect Allah and Allah the Almighty will be there for you. إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ And if you ask anybody, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, 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 the main point in this hadith is the how he is addressing uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu before um, starting to teach. So, Ya Ghulam, building the love and affection with, with his companion, his student Abdullah ibn Abbas. Now, of course, we all understand and we all see the mercy of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi with children. But does that mean that we, um, we do not discipline the children? Does that mean that we don't teach them the mannerism? We don't teach them the beautiful character? We don't give them al-adab, al-islamiyya, the adab we say? Does that mean that we don't, we don't teach them how to be a good human being? And now, the issue, the definition of discipline varies from parents to parents. Mm -hmm. Some might say a little bit of harshness, some might say a little bit of strict word, mm -hmm. the other might even go beyond that. Yes. Now, how, wh where do we make a stand? Okay. So let, first of all, let's talk about the parents who, who are heedless about disciplining their children. Okay. I have seen parents, believe me, they leave their children and children do anything they like and they, they don't say anything. I mean, they break the stuff. They break, they would break the stuff, they would they would cause like turmoil, chaos. They would go to the p other people's house and they would do things that you'll be shocked to see and parents are quiet. Um, pa parents are, 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 are like silent. And just to put Ajib. a balance, uh, just to, uh, I understand that, just to put a balance yeah. on it, some parents might argue if I discipline them, then the law and authorities would no, consider no, it or take it no, away. No, but then again, at least I can say, don't do this. Law and authority has, has some, there, there's a point, there's, there are some sort of discipline you can do, even according to the law. Law doesn't say that you, can, you, know, you can't tell your child, you can't speak to them, you can't explain to them, you can't, mm -hmm. at, you know, at least you can, you can sometimes be slightly strong on them and you can use the strong, uh, like you can tell them strongly that don't do that. Um, so we have seen children are left without any discipline and that obviously again is not the teaching of Islam and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So th there, is, there is bias, there is imbalance there. So let's see what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he disciplined the children. There is a hadith in the book of Imam Ahmad Rahimahullah, uh, Musnad Imam Ahmad Rahimahullah, on the authority of Umar ibn Abi Salama, 
Now this is the disciplining. The Prophet somehow he's disciplining. So he says, Kuntu ghulaman fi hijri Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was a small child, young boy, under the guardianship of, of, of Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa kanat yadi tatishu fi safha. And when we would eat together from one plate, okay, then he said, he, used to, he says, my hand would go everywhere. I would eat from my side, from that side, from the other side, from every side. Obviously, you know the tradition and culture of many Muslim and even Arabs that they still eat from the same plate. And, and you see that they have a big plate and they eat from the same plate. So he would say, my hand would go around. Yadi tatishu fi safha. Fa'allamahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught him the lesson at that time. But again, with lenience and kindness, kayfa uh, ya'kul, uh, how someone should eat. So he said, ya ghulam. Again, he said, ya ghulam, look. Ya ghulam, oh beautiful child, oh beloved son. Sammillah. When you eat, say bismillah. Eat in the name of Allah. Sammillah. Bismillah wa ala barakatillah. I mean, today nowadays we teach so many other things. We teach so many other kind of like um, words and expressions. But we don't teach our children the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, there are a lot of barakah in these things. So sammillah. Name, mention your, the name of your Lord. And then he says, wa, uh, so, sammillah wa kul biyaminik. And eat with your right hand. Eat with your right hand. This is an important teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many people we see, even including parents, even some scholars, sometimes we see eating with the right, left hand and even drinking with the left hand. But a strong teaching, we are the people of Yameen, people of right. You see, Yameen is an important thing. Our, we would get the rewards from Allah with the right hand. So, Ahlul Yameen or Ahlul Shimal. So, Sammillah wa kul biyaminik, eat with your right hand and drink with your right hand. Wa kul mimma yalik, and eat from your side. Eat from your side, don't go here and there, don't go and, uh, and take from all uh, sides of the plate. So there's a huge lesson of courtesy there. Courtesy, now, adab, now, akhlaq. That's very, very true, but mm. now when we see, when we're mm. invited to any of the events, or any of the parties, we mm. do see people leave the things that are closer to the table and go beyond what's <laughs> away from them and cause inconvenience to others. Yes. So is it, does it mean from what no, you've said? I mean, if the plate is one, then we're talking about one plate, eating okay. from one plate. So uh, that's important. But at the same time, the people on the other side of the table, that happens in wedding, we see, mm. people are busy eating by themselves. They don't care about people are around them so they would finish the kebabs they would finish all everything the tikkas <laughs> and all you know the rice but look generally islam is a religion of f for of being with uh, for others that's very important <coughs> ta'awun ta'awun you know being there for others we look at the priority of others before us this is called the concept of ihsan and this kind of society the holy prophet established la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhi ma yuhibbu li nafsi none of you can be a true believer until you love for your brother more than what you love for yourself or what you love for yourself so look at the disciplining again so we cannot just shut our mouth and we can't say anything to our children we see out of excessive love some fathers and mm. some mothers because they love their children so much they wouldn't say anything believe me they wouldn't say anything and they mm. would cause even like they go they'll go to the other people's house they'll break the glasses wardrobes uh, everything you know but then again we have the other side of it mm. that the now come to the other tried, side yeah they have put the utmost effort but some still the children but some do but i must be honest some i have seen some really don't put that much effort but but many parents do i don't mean to say they don't do but some parents they just love their children and they say they even say i mean my children i love them so much they can do anything they like <laughs> but this is not we do, we're not doing any favor we're not favoring our children rather we are causing a lot of destruction and we are giving them bad akhlaq and bad mannerism so the discipline there but now come to the other side of it does discipline means violence does the discipline means excessive heating does the discipline means abusive words like swearing have you have you heard swearing constant swearing from parents to each other amader amader samajer moddhe onek pitamatara mane continuously darabaik bhabe tara gali galaj kore ebong gali galaj ke kono gunai mone kore na je gunar antarbhuta mone mone kore na sibabul muslimi fusuqun rasul ekam said that swearing 
or using abusive words is fisk, it's a transgressing, it's a transgression. So swearing words, cons constantly abusive words, and also constantly swearing words. And we have so many different swearing words. And I heard from parents, even sometimes religious, considered to be religious, dharmic paribara madde gula dekha jaye, jama bara gali galas kore. In front of the children. In front of the children and, and, and swearing at children. At the same time, you teach children not to swear. So how can the child learn actually? So why, why, when you are using the same words? Does discipline mean also constant negative comments? So you see people saying, oh, you can never be successful. You have never learned. You have never passed your exam. Even if they see their, <coughs> chi uh, their child is slightly lower than another child in school, mm. then they would, they would diss them. Now, there is another element to it. Mm. A lot of our parents I have seen, yeah. I'm sure you will have the experience mm. as well, they do not understand that there is something called as learning difficulties. Yes. They that do not they, understand this the want, child psychology. Absolutely correct. So they want their child to be exactly the same as someone who got and distinction. And always compare the with someone else who is better. Comparing. Yeah. Again, this is also a wrong thing. So now, disciplining doesn't really mean being violent or children are being exposed to violence behavior, violent behavior, like maybe elders are fighting constantly at home, but physical fighting. But there is another element mm -hmm. to it. We do see our children are playing violent video games on the oh, computer, that's, that's, on that's, TV. That's even worse. That's even worse. I mean, I, I understand that I can imagine why our people are becoming violent nowadays because what they're getting from their from from the media, from the, from this, dark, uh, they're getting the dark energies. The, what are they learning from the, from these films and and you know those who are making these kind of films? The intention we need to we need to review ourselves. So um, so coming back to again violence, physical violence, excessive heating, again, it, uh, you know some people consider as disciplining. Also abusive words, swearing words, galigalaj, uh, constant negative comments and criticizing in front of other people. Mm. You know, embarrassing the children in front of, in public. Look, we cannot find anywhere Prophet Sallallahu embarrassed anyone. Look, even when Akra ibn Habis said, I've never ch kissed any of my children out of the 10 children, he never said, you're cruel, you're bad. But he said, la yarham, la yarham. He said, no, if someone doesn't show the mercy, nobody, he will, he will not be, uh, he'll not be shown the mercy. Also, no one would show the mercy to him. So, Rasulullah Sallallahu wouldn't criticize or Embarrass or belittle now these children in in front of other people. Yes. Now, with regards to the children, you're saying, did he not teach that he d the fault of other brother must always be kept hidden and exactly. discussed in private? Satara Muslim, satara Allah, so, if it's for the adult, then mm. imagine what should it be for the children? Yes, th that is right. So now, our problems that when we come to discipline ourselves, we fail to understand the prophetic discipline. At the same time, we fail to understand the children's psychology. Uh, we think sometimes that, oh, screaming at all time and you swearing words at all time, it's something that is beneficial. But we don't understand. When you, swear, when you scream, then this scream becomes like normal to children. Then mm. you start using swearing words, then there's here and you know, it, it comes through one, one year and then it goes, through, uh, it goes out through another year, the other year. So the, it becomes normal for them. Again, you, sometimes you, you hit them, then this becomes also normal um, to the children. So uh, we have to be very careful that we avoid these things because children are, are very delicate and they're, they're, they're still small. And what we do the way we behave with them, the way we, we interact, the way we speak, the way we, we conduct, that's what they will become in the future. That's very true. Mm. And then the other side of it, we know from the child psychology, it's easy for them to pick up the bad habits, habits, the very, negative habits, very, very easy. then the positive or the good ones. And, and that's the reason why he says that the, the children who are victims of sexual abuse, uh, especially um, the, 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 the sons, the, the boys, um, those who are sexually abused, they become also uh, perpetrators in the in the future. They become also abusers. The research shows that. Yeah, re re research show, shows that, you know, they become also the abusers. Now, unfortunately, our society, I am the Pita Mata Der Modde, one day, I am the Shama Der Modde, the public is the one Atishujon Shamne, Unno Manush Shamne Galigalas, Lodja, Lodja Dewa, Bachazak Bachaderke, Tarpore Chutodeke, excessively. Or Tironjon Kora, Maramari Mode, Tarpore, the physical Maramari Jigulase, Golum, the Otironjon Kora. These are the things we always see in our society, but we have to be careful. 
what, as I said, the way we treat our children, that's what they become in the future. Some of the mistakes that we see uh, in our society, uh, some of the mistakes are made by parents and the relatives. Mm -hmm. So one mistake I've seen, if, uh, uh, if one child makes a mistake, then, um, sorry, mainly if the eldest child make the, uh, if the if 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 the children make mistake then the blame goes to the eldest one the eldest one yeah, the eldest one mostly the, or, the or, or blaming another one for the mistakes of the other children but there's other way as well mm -hmm. if a child does something wrong the society that we live in they will blame the parents that they couldn't actually discipline the children whereas the parents sometimes no, no, you see no. what I, what I, have instilled with them yeah that, that's true but what i meant is that so suppose you have five children now, many parents, the mistake they make, if the youngest child or if the media, middle child make, made a mistake, they will say, because of you, you are the eldest, you should have been role model, you should have mm. been the best one, they are doing this today. They, you are not setting the example and that's why you get the blame. <laughs> and I have seen that the eldest child, mostly in our Bengali and in Asian societies, we say they get blamed for the mistake of the other siblings and mm. other children. So this is a big mistake and this also, affects a child and and it has an effect throughout the life so blaming one sibling because of the mistakes of others that's wrong Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala taziru waziratun wizra ukhra like um, uh, only the punishment or only the iqab should be given to the person who commits the mistakes or who commits the sins then also we have um, uh, we've seen the mistakes, some of the, uh, some, uh, amongst the major mistakes, the being neglectful towards the sexual abuse, the children who are victims of the sexual abuse. And the perpetrators are mostly the close relatives. So we see like, for example, a child, whether a boy or girl, abused sexually. And when that child, a lot of time they can't speak. They cannot share these problems with their parents. And a lot of the time we do understand a child even does not understand that he's actually a victim. Yes, 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 that, that's right. That's right. And, so, and they, they reveal that in the later stage of life. Correct. And we saw many cases Indeed. recently in news. Um, so um, children, we see the, the boys and girls are abused in many ways and they cannot speak to their, their parents. And... Um, and, and a lot of time, parents don't understand. They say, oh, it's your mistake. If it's especially amongst the relatives, close relatives. So uh, if it's a cousin, first cousin, or close, close, close relatives, then the parents say, oh, why? Then that means you were there as well. I mean, you had a, you had a role to play there. Uh, and, and, and so they wouldn't take the case seriously. And I, have, I know the children are suffering in silence. in silence. In silence. I mean, then the, what should the parents do? So the, does it mean that they shouldn't allow the children to be in, co in a company of others for a long time? No, I mean, they, they should be, but how should they manage it? Parents should should obviously allow their children to be mixed with, with their relatives. That's fine, mm. but they should keep an eye. They shouldn't Clear leave supervision. them. Yes, supervision. They, mm. shouldn't, they shouldn't leave them like freely. The, the other element is blind trust. Yeah, blind trust. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter, it's your just cousin. Correct. You know, in our society, we say, oh, tumar sasa chacha to bai shudu, tumar to mama, tumar to chacha. Oh, you know, we, we make it very easy uh, by saying these words. But don't forget, most of the perpetrators of this abuse are close relatives. And we don't understand that. But obviously, this is the, this is the, this is the reality. I mean, certain cases that I've even come across even shocks me that what, let's put it this way, what should be the hijab criteria of if um, the the daughter, the, the, the father is actually a stepfather. Mm -hmm. Now, what should be the hijab criteria of the daughter towards the stepfather? Because um, bearing in mind, yeah, if there's she, a difference if she's, between if father and stepmother, father. Ste you mean the stepfather? Stepfather, yeah. Okay. Um, if, the, if the mother fed, obviously, the milk to that, to that child, yeah. then, then he, beca she becomes like a, a, or like a father. Or, 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 no, or put it this way, the mother, it's a mother's daughter, mm. but obviously a second marriage. Now that mm. daughter, this yes, is yes, stepfather. Yes, that now how should that daughter maintain the hijab criteria? I mean, she should be obviously decently dressing, but she still can go in front of, and she can still be mm. with, with the father, and there's no problem. Uh, but uh, as I said, that's, that's abuse, the sexual abuse is something is neglected in our society, and especially in, in Asian societies. 
this is quite uh, uh, t this matter. These matters are taken seriously in the Western society, but and in it's the very traumatizing for the and child. very traumatizing, uh, and and these can have relationship problems in the future. I mean, if uh, a child is abused sexually during the childhood in a, in a, in an excessive way, or or even like minor or major, they can have problems with their husbands and partners and spouses in the future. And this is something we do not understand. Uh, uh, we, we always blame the people, but we don't see where these people are coming from, why they're affected, because these are emotional uh, emotional uh, uh, problems. Now, in quick words, what would your solution be towards that? Um, how, how, should, how should parents protect, guard their children, yeah, yeah. and especially taking care of our children that do not feel fall in the victim S criteria? So as I said, the parents are like responsible, and they should have clear supervision, mm -hmm. and they should be looking after and taking care of the children no matter where they may be. And if a child comes and talks to them, they should listen to the problem, even though they might, it might be insignificant at times, but they still should listen to it and they should look into it instead of neglecting and being hateful, uh, heedless, and, 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 and rejecting the matter. And I've seen so people... So basically, they should take the matter very seriously. Seriously. And take the necessary steps accordingly. Yes, yes. We saw also parents are making mistakes while disciplining. Sometimes they lock the children up in the rooms. Have you seen that? Yes. Lock the yes. children up. That's they say, you'll never do that again. And we saw also... A sort uh, of punishment. Yeah, yeah, also they put the children in balcony, in gardens. In the, in the garden, in balcony, that you cannot come in unless you sort yourself out. These are obviously the wrong way of disciplining a child because this will have a negative effects on the child. Um, also, very important um, thing that a lot of time we fulfill our anger or we, we frustration. Yeah, frustration on children due to the external problems, maybe like problems between work. husband and wife, or problems between problems at workplace, or problems in other places, business related issues, stress, and other things. And then what happened is that everything goes on the child. That's haram, very wrong, vulm. Because just because we are frustrated, just because we have problems, it doesn't mean that we come and exercise and we uh, become violent, we become harsh, we start swearing, we, we use abusive words, and we do things which are um, ethically wrongs uh, in front of our children. Uh, this is vulm, a clear oppression, injustice, unfairness, because children are young, they cannot do much, they cannot say much, but we have to be careful because we will be questioned by Allah Taala on the Day of Judgment, even if we commit any vulm against a child, because a child is again, a, a, a important creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just because they cannot speak or they cannot defend or they cannot say that doesn't mean that we you know do whatever we like and also uh, one of the mistakes I, I forgot to mention that sometimes the parents they start beating the children they start hitting them they start <coughs> punishing them without even questioning them what happened without asking them like why this happened or how this happened what was the, the problem Without questioning, they straight away go and they start punishing. Don't forget that punishing excessively and, and, and being abusive, being harsh, being violent, these leave a lot of social and psychological problems and the children suffer throughout the life. And the other aspect of it is if someone complains about our own children, without listening to this, our children's side of the story, we mm. start punishing them straight away just on the yes. basis of someone told something someone, to us. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true as well. And also at times people can be um, on the side of the children as well, uh, uh, vice versa. That, you know, we, just because someone said about... Uh, uh, or, or just because your child complained about somebody else without listening to the other children, you start saying, yeah, that's right, you know, this is, this is what happened. You start completely trusting. Very, very true. And didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, um, That's one thing. The other thing is also uh, that Prophet Sallallahu said, do not judge unless you listen to the other side. Correct. So never judge unless you listen to both sides. But we have a problems that we don't listen to both sides. Okay, and the, my final question would be, mm -hmm. today, especially those who are involved with the local authorities or those who are involved with teaching profession, it's mm -hmm. one of the challenging aspect mm -hmm. that a child needs to be disciplined. Yes. But at the same time... Avoiding... Uh, avoiding to, or fa falling under the trap that they might be breaking the law. So that's now, where... How can we balance that? That's, that? Where, that's where Islam came with two important concepts. Islam is based upon two things. Number one is sabr and number two is shukur. <coughs> sabr. Sabr is an element, it's an asset 
it's it's an important asset that if someone has the sabr, then he can come, he can go through many, many challenge, difficulties and challenges and he will be successful. Now, a lot of things we do because we lack sabr, we lack patience. Now, once we, one, once we have the patience, we can deal with things more appropriately and we can deal with things gently, with lenience and with kindness. And in other words, those parents who have who do not have, I would rather say, who do not have a complete understanding of child psychology, Ex yes, child yes. mentality. And generally education, education itself. Yeah. So are there training courses available or are there I, I those halaqas there I for I parents think, to I think get more? Our imams, training? our mashayikh should speak much more on these kind of topics because these are real issues in our society. The children are suffering, women are suffering, elderly people are suffering. These are real issues need to be addressed by imams, by mashayikh, by, by ulama. And, and that's very true and sometimes we also hear some of, not all, very rarely we also do hear about some of the abuses that are happening in one of some of the Darul Ulooms but we don't yeah. even know. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, maybe in our future episode we'll slightly touch on that but obviously this is where the blind trust comes into the play. Yeah, yes. Um, Jazakallah khair for our tonight's program. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to carry on more forward. Our time is up. But inshallah, we'll continue our discussion in our future I hope episodes. the topic is clear and I hope we have learned something tonight. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much. My dear viewers, with this we have come to the conclusion of our tonight's program. We have been discussing about the Holy Prophet and the children and how did he deal, govern and educate and interact with the children. And one of the key messages towards the end, what our Sheikh have said, those, these children are very precious to us. They are an aman given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is our responsibility to ensure that our child has a safe place, a safe environment, and it's our responsibility to protect them. And to all of those, those perpetrators who are committing such heinous crimes and we're reading reports day in, day out, if they might get away in this world, remember there is akhirah. We will all be accountable for action and there is no excuse for any Muslim to commit such sort of heinous crimes or anything which can justify such sort of act. We should all be protected and we should all take lessons from it and we should all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from such sort of heinous crimes. And not only that, we should Allah ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our children and we should ensure that our children are always within our supervision. With this, I come to the conclusion of our tonight's program. Thank you very much for being with us, watching the program. We hope you have found the program educational, inform informative and interactive. Until we meet next Friday, subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anth, astaghfurka wa atubu ilayk, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Yeah.